Hello everyone, hope you are well. It's Charles Watts here, Arsenal correspondent at Goal. Um, back to do another one of these videos. It's been a while, been probably about a week or so since my last video, so I thought I'd pop back on, um, just go over a couple of things um, that's going on at Arsenal at the moment and just fill you in as much as I can. Keep you updated as touch wood, fingers crossed, we are edging, edging towards football restarting again or perhaps not football as we know it or love it but football nonetheless restarting in this country I'm sure you all saw the Bundesliga uh, over the weekend and Borussia Dortmund's win against Schalke and all the matches being played behind closed doors and thought well it may not be the football that we've come to know and love but at least it's been football to watch over the weekend it's sort of cheered up a lot of people and certainly a novelty factor I think of being able to see live football again um, certainly boosted a lot of people whether it's going to stay the case after about six months if we're still playing behind closed doors after six months if it will generate the same sort of excitement I'm not so sure but still it was football and it was nice to see it again and, uh, and see especially Borussia Dortmund play so well as they beat Schalke 4-0 um, so yeah I mean we are beginning to get towards that stage in England certainly with the Premier League um, and I'll get to that um, during this video I'll talk about the preparations Arsenal putting in place at the moment as things will certainly start to build up this week um, at London Colney at the training centre as um, we sort of aim towards project restart and getting the players in the best shape as possible before um, the uh, season starts up again. Um, but before that, so I'm just looking at my computer here, so I just had a message flash up. Before that, I will um, just talk you through a bit of a news line that's come out of Arsenal at the moment. I'm not sure if you've seen it or not. You probably have done because the pictures have been all over social media since late last night. Alexander Lacazette is in a little spot of bother at the moment. Um, he was plastered all over the front page of the Daily Star newspaper in England this morning on Sunday morning um, with pictures taken from a video that has been circulated and has been obtained by the Daily Star showing him inhaling from a balloon. Um, now this comes 18 months after a lot of Arsenal players, you probably remember it, were again caught out in the media um, thanks to a video that was circulated from them at a private booth in a nightclub in London um, inhaling from balloons. It was Lacazette, Aubameyang, uh, Gwendouzi was there, I think Ozil was there, Kalazanach, maybe Mkhitaryan. Um, and uh, and the, yeah, the footage was widely circulated again on social media after it was released in the press. Um, and... Um, you know, Arsenal players were reminded of their their responsibilities. The pictures didn't look great. The videos didn't look great. I mean, I remember Guendouzi really sort of taking a big old drag on that balloon. Um, you know, sort of slumping down in his chair. I mean, we all know that balloons are what the balloons are used for, and um, sort of laughing gas and hippie crack, as it's known. Certainly, when footballers seem to get busted taking it, and sort of described as hippie crack, crack, which I always think is the most rubbish name for something ever. Um, but it's laughing gas, it's commonly used as laughing gas, obviously. Um, not technically illegal, so, you know, players aren't doing anything wrong um, in terms of the law, but it doesn't look great on the club, and the club certainly came out and reminded the players of their responsibility back then, 18 months ago. And now Lacazette's been caught again inhaling from a balloon. Um, and the, the, again, the pictures don't look great, the video doesn't look great, and... Arsenal will be dealing with Lacazette internally. They have released a statement today. They were keen to talk to Lacazette after the pictures emerged to get his side of the story. And having done that, they've now released a statement. It's a very short statement. I'll read it to you now. Um, there is a story on goal.com that I've published already if you want to um, go and check that out afterwards. But the statement says, this is a private matter which we are taking seriously. It will be handled internally. So Lacazette is facing bit of a wrap from Arsenal over this. I think given it's the second time in 18 months that something like this has happened and he's been caught um, and plastered all over the press for something like this, I don't think Arsenal will be taking it, um, well as they say, they will be taking it seriously so they won't be taking it lightly and Mikel Arteta certainly is not a coach who will um, enjoy seeing his players caught out like this. Um, you know, as I said, it's not illegal and the, the pictures have come from a video that was um, circulated amongst Lacazette's friends so whoever has actually leaked this to the press I'm sure Lacazette's not going to be impressed by that I'm not sure they'll be friends anymore um, but however the video has emerged and however the pictures have emerged it doesn't look great on Lacazette it doesn't look great at Arsenal certainly not in this time given what's going on 
outside of football across the country. They don't need one of their players plastered all over the front pages of the national media. So Arsenal will be handling the situation. They will be handling it internally. And um, you know exactly what sort of punishment Lacazette's going to get dished out with here. It doesn't. It's not um, not been decided yet, but I think he'll certainly be. He'll be facing up to some sort of fine and some sort of um, internal disciplinary proceedings. And um, you know he's not had a great season, Lacazette. And this is just another another thing against him really in this in this season, which has been difficult. He's only scored nine goals. So he had that long, long period of not scoring away from home in the Premier League. He struggled even at home. He struggled really. His performance hasn't been certainly not as good as last year, where he, in my view, deservedly was known player of the season. He had an excellent season. But he got injured right in right just before the season started in that Emirates Cup match against Leon. Did his ankle. Played the first couple of games. Scored, in fact, in the two home games against Burnley and Tottenham. But then he had to have that long time out because the ankle wasn't getting better. And he's just never been able to recover from that this season. It's been really difficult. He's always been chasing his form. Um, and uh, and yeah, this isn't gonna this isn't gonna help him. Certainly not. Under Arteta, it would have been um, keen to sort of get through to the starting things up again with no controversy. And obviously, this has happened. So it's not great on on Lacazette, and it will be dealt with um, by Arsenal, as their statement says. Like I said, there is a story on Goal.com now live about this. So please do find out more about it. Head over there and give it a read. Right, unless controversial matters let's now talk about Arsenal's plan to resume training this week at London Colney now Arsenal's players have been using London Colney for about three weeks now individually and only to work on their fitness um, they've each been having a sort of one hour time slot that's been pre-allocated them at the start of the week and they've been able to go to London Colney in their cars already in their training kit go straight out to one of the 10 pitches which they've been using completely by themselves no other players near having an hour long, as I said, um, time slot just to go through a sort of fitness plan that's been sent to them by the coaches. There have been balls there, so they've been able to, you know, use them and you know, do some shooting, things like that. But then they've been at the end of the hour slot, heading back to their cars, getting straight in them, driving home, shower, changed at home and all that. But that could well be changing this week, certainly um, by the middle of the week. Arsenal hoping to move to the next phase of their um, training plans. Uh, I'll just talk you through exactly what's going to happen now. These are training plans um, and protocols that have been sort of passed, circulated to the clubs by the Premier League on the government advice that was given to them during the week. This is what the Premier League want to do and if the clubs can agree to it and say they've got it in place and it might be rolled out by, like I said, the middle of the week. Now, the big thing is the testing for coronavirus. Now, Arsenal have yet to be tested for COVID-19, but they are hoping that all of the players and coaching staff will be tested by Monday, by the end of play on Monday um, at London Colney. It's an independent, um, the test will be done independently, won't be done by the club's medical staff. Testing teams will arrive at London Colney, all the players, coaching staff will have those tests and then they'll have to wait about 24 hours, maybe 48 hours, but probably around 24 hours to get those results. Now, if, as long as those results come back positive, uh, sorry, negative, um, then they will be able to start training. Um, there's a shareholder meeting with Premier League clubs on Monday and um, where basically all the clubs have to just kind of agree to the training protocols, say that you know, they're comfortable with them, they've, they can put them into place. Should that all get the green light on Monday and should Arsenal players all come back negative in terms of the coronavirus test, then possibly Wednesday, maybe Thursday, but possibly Wednesday, then Arsenal will be able to move to small group training at London Colney. Um, and uh, and then you know and that's first phase of the new protocols being put into place. Now, what small group training means is up to a maximum of five players working in groups with um, coaching staff. Up to about three coaching staff, I think, including obviously Mikel Arteta. Um, there again, it's going to be kind of worked on time slots at the training ground, so it's not all of the players aren't there on site at any one time. It's going to be about sort of seventy-five minute time slot where players can arrive in their groups which have been pre-decided and go through a training process uh, training program with the coaching staff as i said last about 75 minutes it's a big step forward to what they've been doing before which as i said was just fitness work this time they're actually going to come in they're going to be going through a training program you know shooting things like that but it's still no contact contact is not let you not going yet going to be allowed that's going to be at phase two of the new protocols which are possibly next week or you know seven days further down the line something like that possibly 10 days further down the line something like that but right now it's still going to be 
um, no contact. Players are going to be players and coaching staff as much as possible will still be two meters apart at all times. The so social distancing measures will be there. So things like tackling, you know, that's not going to be on the agenda yet. It's going to be more sort of technique type stuff with the coaching staff passing. Um, and, and things like that. But it's still a big step forward compared to what we have been useful, used to and the players are certainly going to um, like that. I saw Granit Xhaka on his Instagram tweeting, uh, sorry, not tweeting, but um, posting on his Instagram about how his sort of excitement levels about potentially going back to training with some of his teammates, which they haven't done yet. Um, again, the players are going to be sort of coming in fully closed. They're going to be leaving fully closed, getting showered and changed back at home after the session's done. Previously, in the last three weeks, when they have been working on their fitness at Coley, all of the buildings have been shut. No, you know, no buildings at all. It's just been car park, training pitch, car park, home. Now there will be a minimum minimal amount of buildings um, open at Coley. I'm not exactly sure what they are. Possibly physiotherapy stuff like that. Um, so there will be some sort of access to the buildings now, which hasn't been the case for the last few weeks, but players will only be able to mix together in their groups on the training pitches, so not inside. So it's still a very, there's still very strict guidelines to follow. Um, it's not a case of everyone's going to be sort of charging around, it's going to be everyone's sitting in a cafeteria eating and stuff like that uh, together. It's not going to be the case. There's still really strict pros, um, guidelines that they're going to have to follow, but it is... They are, Arsenal are hoping to move by Wednesday to phase one of the new training protocols ahead of all aimed, you know, towards Premier League's project restart, which is still penciled in for at some point mid-June. So, you know, it's a good, it's good news for the players, certainly who want to get back out there. And it's good news for fans, I suppose, as well, because it's just an example that possibly we are getting closer to football starting up again in, in, this, uh, in this country. Um, but there are, as I said, it all kind of depends on the coronavirus test on Monday, which hopefully Arsenal or Arsenal players will test negative and then they will be able to move forward, providing also that the Premier League shareholders give the green light to all the new protocols on Monday, which um, that shareholder meeting will be happening basically at the exact same time that most of the players will be um, having their coronavirus tests at London Colney. So they're the two really big sort of stories at the moment with Arsenal, Lacazette and the potential return to training. So I thought I'd just come on and fill you in on those and I hope that's um, this has given you a little bit more information and uh, sort of sets things out. I've tried to set things out as clearly as possible in terms of the training. I know it probably does sound a, a bit complicated um, and if I haven't explained it well enough, again, head over to goal.com because there is a story um, on site that's going to be talking about exactly what I've been what I've been reviewing on this video and Arsenal's return to training and how it's all going to work over the next few days. Thank you uh, for taking the time to watch this video. Thank you for continuing to support this channel. Um, I hope you are enjoying it and um, please if you're just watching it for the first time, you popped on in for the first time and you haven't yet, hit that subscribe button and I'll try and keep you as updated as possible with all news and views from Arsenal Football Club. I will be doing another one of my Q&As at some point in the near future. I've asked on social media already for some of the questions to come in. I've had lots of responses to that. So at some point this week, I will record another of the Q&A. So please do look out for that. I'm not sure exactly when I'll post the video, but it will be coming at some point this week. I promise. So thank you, everyone. Please do enjoy your week coming up and uh, stay safe.